You're listening to the Cantina Cast, your home for thought-provoking Star Wars talk. Join Mike and Albert each week as they break down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, all your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Welcome to episode 222, The Last Jedi, General Leia Organa. We finally got to this episode. This is probably the last of The Last Jedi stuff for a little while. Um, and just, I just want to mention at the top of the show, in case you don't listen to us all the way through the show, um, this is going to be our last episode for two weeks. So we're going to take two weeks. We've got some stuff to figure out, uh, tighten some stuff up, clean house a little bit. We've kind of hinted at it the last episode. Um, but I just want to make it clear that we're kind of going to take a little two week break, which I am kind of looking forward to because I haven't had a break in, I think a year and a half, maybe I think, or something. It's been a while. I could use a little bit of a break to figure some stuff out. But anyway, how about hello? How are you? What's going on? Yeah, I'm doing good, Mike. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm kind of excited about the break, too. We've got a couple cool things in the works. Um, I've uh, been hinting, on, hinting, at, hinting at Discord about that. Um, well, that top secret project. You're yeah, huh? we've got a top secret project that we're working on, too. So that should be a lot of fun. So uh, it's a much needed break, even though not. I mean, I haven't really been doing this, you know, full time uh, for too long, but just the amount of stuff that we've got working uh, or at least in flight right now, I think this is a good time to really get away from the podcast and just start putting some stuff together and come back, you know, a little bit stronger. So yeah, exactly. And of course we got rebels is coming out and we're going to talk about a little bit of rebels here. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah. we got rebels will be coming out and when we come back, we're going to do a whole show on rebels and wrap that all up and then move on another break from talking about the last Jedi. Just, uh, you know, there are other things in the star Wars universe that we could talk about. Um, so we're going to do that, uh, but we got a little bit of news we'll get into here, which is there are new books coming. I believe Solo is going to have a tie-in. I think that that was that they mentioned that sometime this week. I think, or well, they're going to mention it. I'm not sure. By the time you hear this, you'll definitely know what's going on. Um, but they didn't say anything else, like what's permanent. They didn't hint at everything, anything, did they? No, this was this was Maz, who's one of the uh, works over at uh, Disney. Um, but she posted something on Twitter just saying that there was some big uh, novel news coming. And so, you know, that set off a number of speculation theories and, and that kind of oh, thing. Of course. Um, yeah. I, so let's just jump right into it, what it could possibly be. I think uh, Padme book is probably the most likely um, to get announced here just because we've heard some rumblings about that um, maybe about two, three weeks ago. And even earlier than that, when it was oh, I think, very, yeah, a while back, a while we heard, heard, right. It's, yeah. it, it's kind of just always been out there, but it seems to have been picking up some speed here recently. And then, you know, coincides with this announcement. It's um, written by George Lucas. No, just kidding. No, I, I would imagine, you know, honestly, it's probably going to, I'd, I'd be really happy if it was Claudia Gray, just to let her keep going down that path of, um, yeah, that know. would be a good fit. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. so Padme is probably not, uh, maybe a possibility, um, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about on the show and, um, you know, there, it may be a good possibility that we'll get a Snoke novel from this. Um, you know, this is all, this is all predicated upon whether or not you believe Snoke is going to come back in nine or not. Um, but if you feel like he's, you know, either way, depending on where they land this thing, it could be, you know, years ago that we get it, but maybe we get some backstory there. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll say there's some legs and truth to that because. I want to say just prior to The Last Jedi coming out, the story group had said, well, they mapped out his backstory and what's going to happen with him. So I, I imagine that's a good possibility. And a novel's probably, if they're not going to bring him at nine, which I don't think they will, that's probably the best avenue to go with, with is with a novel, almost like Plagueis. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I would rather that he do yep. Snoke as a novel than like a comic book or... Oh yeah, you know, a, a cartoon or something. I, I definitely novel is would give him. I would give him justice. I think. Yeah, I, and enough with the little. You know, I love the comics and everything, and, and well, I don't love all of them, but you know, there are some good ones that are interesting and compelling. But it's short and sweet. We want. We I think as fans, we deserve a novel in in that whole backstory, and and just so we can piece together some things. I think. Uh, I think as a fandom, we we kind of deserve that. But that's just my own take on it. I could be wrong or whatever. But me personally, I, as far as books go, eh, I don't know. I'm not sure where I want them to go next. I would love a Ben Solo and 
Luke, Luke Skywalker novel. I said that before when I was reading Bloodlines. I said all I kept wanting with that book, which is probably my second favorite new canon book other than A New Dawn, is, you know, I would love to see a story with Luke and Ben and how that worked out. But the way things looked in The Last Jedi, I'm not sure it was exactly uh, friendly, like an action adventure, like Obi-Wan and, and Anakin type stuff. I think it was a little different, but so, but anyway. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I mean, they could still do it. I think we talked about this in, uh, maybe it was the Kylo episode. I forget now, but there there had to have been a time in there where things were really cool, right? They were they were gelling and, and we were getting that dynamic, maybe what kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather, I'd want to see that and leave all the contentious stuff uh maybe hint at it in the novel yeah you just leave the seeds you don't have to get right too crazy into right it. but make it make it you know make it this this view of their relationship that we obviously didn't see in episode you know seven uh, well we didn't see anything in seven but we didn't see anything in eight and we got just um you know the flashback stuff but that'd be kind of cool to kind of to, to go back to that time when they were you know working as a, a duo almost like canaan and and uh, ezra there and uh, going on missions and everything was cool and hunky dory, and you'd start getting those little seeds that maybe he was being tempted by the uh, dark side, or Snoke was influencing him in some way. Um, well, see, that's the thing with the story, though, as I feel like Snoke and Luke had said, uh, you know, uh, Snoke had already turned his heart. So in in my mind, Snoke has, you know, laid those claws in him long ago, and mm -hmm. you know, I, so I don't know if we get the swashbuckling camaraderie type thing. I I don't. I did. I, I could be wrong. I mean, they could do whatever they want to do. I mean, I just, I don't know if I see it. But anyway, yeah. But um, speaking of uh, dynamic duos, we got a little short clip of Kanan and Ezra uh, talking about. Uh, this was on ABC News, I think it was. It was a tweet or something. There was a clip uh, of Kanan and, and Ezra speaking, and basically Kanan telling him, "Well, spoiler. You can you can turn off right now for two seconds if you want." Uh, telling Ezra to lead the mission because he can't do it because, you know, I guess his emotions that are involved with rescuing Hera, which I think is an interesting thing and a, and a kind of a brave thing for a master to say that to a student, like realizing that his emotions might get the better of him and maybe yeah. is undoing in the end. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, in the, it's it's 45 seconds, if that, and there's enough in here that we were like, wow, we should really probably should talk about this because um, and the line is, uh, he says, I would, this is after he tells Ezra that he needs him to lead the mission. Um, and Ezra fires back, Hey, shouldn't you be the one to do that? And he says, I would, but I can't think clearly because of the way I feel about her. I might make a mistake, one that could cost, uh, cost, cost us. Um, and so then he, so the, in the article, it goes on, Filoni's kind of talking about how this is kind of that transference moment where, You've got the student um, or the master going to the student and saying, I need you to kind of take over now. He's passing the torch. Um, very similar to like, you know, Kenobi and Luke and a number of other kind of Star Wars characters that, or Star Wars characters that we've that we've seen. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he's almost kind of just saying, look, I I'm a Jedi. I don't want I don't want these emotions to play a part in this. So I need you to take the lead. That's kind of pretty big of him, especially when you consider that it's Hera that he's going in to, to have to save. So. Yeah, um, well, because like, Anakin wouldn't do such a thing, you know. No, he, he would like charge right in by now. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, he would have taken out half of the uh, the empire right now just to do what he wanted to do. But the I think that's pretty. That shows that he is the master there, where he's like willing to say, "All right, I need you to do it because my emotions are going to be high, and I could make a mistake that's going to cost you, uh, Sabine, and so forth, and which will in turn cause the rebellion to maybe fall." And so he's thinking, all right, I have to save Hera and I have to keep the, 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 the rebellion intact. So I got to think bigger than just me. Yeah. Right. And if I go, if I sacrifice and die, that's okay. Everything else needs to stay in place. And that's the important thing. Not so much me, which is very selfless, I guess you could say. And, and that's, that's what a Jedi is. So yeah. And I Kanan's, think that's that, yeah. that character. I mean, I mean, honestly, uh, I would expect that from Kanan. Hmm. You know, four four seasons in, he's kind of proven that that is the person that he is. Um, oh yeah, from when you see him from a new dawn to this and, and such forth, it, it, that's pretty cool though. I, yeah. I mean, I love the drunken Jedi that he was uh, in a new dawn. That's still my favorite book, and I loved Kanan and Hera in that book. I I think that was a great dynamic. 
Not so much on the TV show, but it's it's a different element, the different characters that have evolved. So, you know, it's not going to be that. But Kanan's character is actually one that I've always liked throughout. It, it, he's always been pretty consistent, and, and I liked his reluctance to take on the student, as most masters are, and, you know, getting over his hurt and stuff, and then going to Bindu and stuff. I always liked the idea of him kind of going off on his own and just being like Bindu and and the father and, and stuff like that, but you know, or, or a soaker even, but you can't have right. that, I guess. So, you know, if, if there's going to be a sacrifice, it's obviously, I think Kanan's a good choice for that. And, uh, we'll see what happens after that though. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was one yeah. bit of that article too. I don't know if you caught it right at the very end. They asked Filoni, um, you know, what, what he was planning, I guess, or what he's working on now, given that, you know, they're, they're coming down to the wire here in terms of the, uh, the series finale. Um, and he kind of, he said, uh, everything needs its time and place to come to life and exist. Baloney said, coyly, I'm very busy on things right now and excited about what we're working on. There won't be a lack of Star Wars in the future. That's for sure. So, yeah. um, you know, sounds like he's got whatever he's doing isn't in the infancy stage. It sounds like they've been, oh, yeah, whatever he's working they, on, right? He's got, well, he's I remember, right now. what was it? In season three, maybe season two, they hired that woman to do some kind of a project. Um, this is going back. I, I I can't remember offhand, but some of our listeners will remember this, and maybe you will, Albert. And they hired her, but they never said anything. And she says, well, I'm a part of the thing, blah, 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 blah. And Dave, that was when Dave kind of took over the whole animation thing, that whole department there. And the other guy took stepped in and was directing Rebels at that point. I think it was mm-hmm. season three or season two. It had to be season two because season three, Dave was overseeing things, but he wasn't directing and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not surprised about that. I figured they've had several things thrown up on the board and kind of like knocking some stuff out or, you know, figuring things out. And they've had some stuff planned out. I I would imagine this is not going to be nothing new for them. Well, it's almost like when Pablo wrote on his uh, pad there when they found out they would do an episode seven before I think George sold the company and he wrote it down. And, and when it was, you know, that was almost a year before he sold the company and everything. So, you know, there's that whole they're ahead of us, really. It's almost like the Clone Wars. When they were writing it, they were a few seasons ahead of yeah. of us, where we were. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, and I, I think I've heard yeah. Filoni talk about in the past just for Rebels. You know, when we see an episode, that's that was an episode like a year that they were, half. Yeah, 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 about, you know, six months to a year before they were working on all of that. Um, so you would, have to, you would have to expect them to be pretty fo- deep into whatever series or s- multiple series that he has in flight right now. So uh, I'm kind of hoping that once Rebels goes, you know, when it ends, I really don't want, I'd, I'd like to see them make some pretty quick announcements about what's coming, you know, See, next. I think over the, I think the summer we'll get something, I think. Like, I, I actually, could be wrong. like actually on the air in the summer? Uh, no, no, no. I think they'll oh, just announce, announcement. yeah, just announce gotcha, that yeah. like, you know, this is our next animated series and maybe a live action thing. I think we're going to get that, yeah. which is because, because the TV side of things has been, I don't want to say neglected. I don't want to use neglected as a the term there. But it hasn't been like they haven't really said, oh, this is going to be, you know, this is going to happen. We've got our spinoffs. We've got our other trilogies and stuff. Now it's maybe time to focus on that. And maybe over the summer, that's the right to after Solo probably is when we'll get something, I imagine. Maybe June-ish. I'll go there somewhere mid-June or whatever. But anyway, let's one last news thing that we should mention. This isn't really a shocker to me. And I, I think we this is kind of known. So I don't know why. I'm even really talking about it, but I'll mention it is I guess we get confirmation that JJ is going to be in, begin production on episode nine this summer, which yeah, yeah, about time. You got, yeah, you kind of figured that. I mean, we just heard <laughs> when the last Jedi came out that, you know, Hey, he turned the script in the same night as the premiere or something like that. So, right, right. so this is nothing new. We, we assumed it would be over the summer and you know, whatnot. It should have been sooner, but they decided to delay it because of everything. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what are your thoughts on, on that? Um, yeah, he's slacking. I mean, what's taking <laughs> you so long, buddy? Let's go. Yeah. yeah um, really. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, we've got, uh, I think the date is December 20th, 2019. Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, go at it. Uh, black diamond. Yeah. There's not much to say. <laughs> we didn't talk than... about black diamond, did we? Uh, no, we didn't really. Is that being the project I... name. Yeah, because it means nothing like space. Oh, yeah, and that's, yeah. I mean, nothing. but there was some discord. I mean, we had some conversation in, in Discord, and I saw some people, you know, trying to tie this back to the, the ring. Snow's and, ring. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was whole, like all yeah, over yeah, the place. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah well, of course, because we're Star Wars fans. Every little thing we take and blow it up into 
something that it isn't. And, you know, we, we come up with every, I mean, we rival conspiracy theorists sometimes with our theories that we come up with. I mean, I, I know, cause I've come up with some wacky ones myself, um, and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's interesting. It's fun to kind of explore and see where you can go with it. But you know, yeah. most, you know, when it comes to like space bear or, or black diamond, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just a fun for Star Wars fans. I guess the, the, the factor is like blue harvest, you know, that type of thing where it mm. kind of, he kind of, it's like even the, the, the code name kind of means something. That's how crazy we are as Star Wars. Fans. I can't think of any other movie where a code name would take on a, it's, it's, a, it's own thing. Like, you know, blue harvest is such a, a big thing. Like it's still mentioned as a, you know, that's what they named the, the family guy thing, you know, that whole thing. So, you know, it, it's interesting, but it really doesn't mean much. And I'll leave it at that. All right. right. Well, let's, let's get into the princess, princess Leia, our princess or general Leia, if you want, whatever you want, wish to call her or Leia. Um, so what, what has changed? And this is the question I've been asking you, Albert, as we go forward with the character dissections or mini dissections, or just talking about the character in, in this specific movie is what's changed since The Force Awakens. Now, I laughed when I wrote this out in the notes because, as we said, it's like five minutes after The Force Awakens, so not much in the beginning. Right. Her so, hairstyle, her outfit. Not, yep, yep, that's changed. Uh, and she's got the, 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 the band on her hair to, for, for, you know, morning, morning con. Yep. Um, that's changed, and she looks snazzy, I guess you could say. But other than that, I mean... Well, what, yeah, know, I mean, well, okay... So in yeah, all seriousness, I think, um, I mean, so we, I don't, so I didn't get to, I didn't get to record the, the Leia episode prior to Last Jedi with you guys, but I know we, we had spoken about you, uh, myself and Joe, but I think one of the things that, um, that we had talked about was just the amount of loss that she's felt in, in her, that, how it's defined her right over the years. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, what's changed? I mean, obviously the the most uh, most apparent thing is that whole mourning that you mentioned. She's mourning uh, the loss of her husband uh, at the hands of her son, none, nonetheless. Um, yeah. Who you know was she lost him? So there's another loss, right? She lost her son to Snoke and the dark side. Uh, if you take it even further back, she's lost her brother uh, for now a number of years because he's been in exile. Yeah. Um, you know, she lost her father to the dark side. She literally lost her entire planet and family. Uh, to the dark side and then if you even go further back i mean leia lost uh, i don't remember that kid's name anymore but that kid uh at the very oh, end yeah. of the novel that bites yep. it right yes yeah so so i mean they, they just she's just had this entire her entire history her entire life has just been one loss after another and uh i thought it was very poignant and i don't have i don't have the quote in front of me but that that moment where in the force awake i'm sorry the last jedi where her and holdo are, are talking and she says you know we've lost so much already um it, when I even in my first showing, when she said that, or when that line was spoken, um, well, you think a layer and all she's been, through yeah, and that's and, exactly yeah. right. I mean, I think about all this, and it's like, wow, this woman has endeared so much, and she continues to be the rock, the pillar, right? The uh, the general, uh, through it all, um, which is you know, why we love her, it's you know, why she's she is who she is. So, well, the interesting thing is because now I got my next question was she prepared to die at the hands of her son because you know there was that connection they kind of connected you know they were connecting there yeah in in the force and she felt it and i'm thinking to myself at that moment when i see it i'm like because she has a calm about her she's not upset she's not crying she's not like kylo is the one who's emotionally distraught about it where she's kind of just okay it is what it is i accepted it you and it's, it ties into what she said at the end of the movie i know he's gone blah 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 that whole thing and it's like she kind of she's been through such trauma in her life and loss and everything else. I think she was at peace with whatever would happen at that point. And it's funny because then she turns into Mary Poppins Leia, or Super Leia, whatever you want to call it, which ironically, I didn't really have a problem with. Um, there's other things I did, but but that didn't bother me so much. And it's interesting that, you know, things had happened, but she realized she's she still had the will to live. You know what I mean? Like, I think she was prepared to die and accepted what could happen, but then she survived because of the force and all that. And she realized the resistance needed her again. Her, I think her duty called her and she put her needs or her maybe wanting to let go of all that and kind of go out and decided, no, the resistance needs me. The galaxy needs me. And went back to what she knows and what's familiar to her. Yeah. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, and that's what this is. This is one of those scenes that 
I, I that I really cannot wait to get the novel to kind of to go into and really see what you know how it's the thought explained process. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thought bubble, so to speak. Right. Because yeah. I mean, this scene itself. I mean, just the other day, I was. I think I was talking about Tolia about this um, in Discord about this. This this very scene, as a matter of fact, even before you had the show notes put together, but we were kind of um, talking about our, our interpretations of how we saw that play out. And for me. Um, and again, the novel will probably clear some of this up, but for me, it almost felt like I didn't see her as at that, in that moment when they're kind of cutting back and forth, which is, you know, super powerful scene. Um, I didn't see her as maybe preparing to die. I think in that moment, she really knew that there's no way he's going to do this. I don't care what anyone says about him. This is my son. This is the same kid that, you know, I was up at 2 AM in the morning holding while he had a fever and crying and rocking to sleep. There's no way, you know, something's going to keep him from doing that. Um, and because in the movie itself, you know, Kylo doesn't fire. We know we see that, you know, he's obviously emotionally distraught. Maybe he was getting that same imagery in his head and realized, okay, I can't, I can't go through with this. Um, and then it was, you know, his wingman that fired. Um, for me, it felt like that's really all that was, is just them reconnecting right at a, as a mother and a son, nothing more. And once the wingman fired, um, I chalk up her preparedness, or I guess, to just the Skywalkers in general. I mean, they have the ability, they have the force, they oh, have yeah. the foresight, yeah. right? She probably saw that coming. And it was just, and, and Ryan Johnson, I think, was, you know, recently uh, had kind of mentioned what had happened here. And it was really kind of, she just went into survival mode, right? Yeah. Uh, unconsciously, she went into some kind of survival mode and was able to, um, you know, keep herself preserved just momentarily while all that happened and then uh, fight through getting, you know, using some kind of telekinesis or whatever to kind of, you know, float back in. But um, that's kind of how that played out to me. But, you know, again, like I said, it, once a novel comes out, I think we'll, we'll have a better understanding of what was really going on because that's where those novels really do a good job is they, they really can get into the mindset of both of those characters in that moment and spend, you know, a good page or two talking about that. I mean, they can cut away to all kinds of stuff that we didn't think about, that was happening in that moment. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what Jason Fry put there. Well, my other question when you were when you're talking about this is, you know, like you said, you know, this is my son. He's not going to do it type that, that type of stuff. And I put in the notes here, did her connection stop him? Obviously there was an emotional thing. He felt it. And maybe, maybe it was the mother's love that he was feeling and knowing that maybe she forgave him or maybe she's just not mad at him. She's very sad. Right. Um, and she holds no grudge with him and she's prepared to die. But that whole whatever, or maybe she just kind of said, don't do it. And he said, all right, I won't do it. And then, you know, what happens happens because the force. <laughs> right. Don't intervenes. you do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Don't you do it. I'll put you to bed um, type of stuff. So I don't know. There's there's some truth to that. I think what you're saying there with the whole, you know, mother son relationship and yeah. and how that works and i i think there's that bond that was there even even if you didn't have a force bond it's still there and you know he knew and stuff and i think me i don't know it's interesting i i get i just felt like looking at her in that moment she was she was very calm to me like she yeah. just wasn't uh panicking but leia when does she have a really panicking really i mean she usually just takes charge and gets a little angry shoots the garbage chute and flies through it, that type of thing. She's not really... Or chokes the big fat slug. Yeah, exactly. She's not really panicky. She just kind of takes action. Very yeah, Anakin. She's like, assertive, just, that's all. I mean, Yeah, ex exactly. That's exactly right. But speaking of her other son, we should talk about Poe, speaking of sons, uh, which is an interesting dynamic with her and Poe. And a lot of people say it's the surrogate son. And I've said on here, I didn't get that, so to speak. I took it as more of a mentor relationship. But I think you disagreed with me a little bit. Maybe I, I guess you can see both ways with that. But uh, well, what did you think of that whole dynamic with Poe and 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 Leia? Obviously, there's a big, you know, influence on Poe. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that, yeah, it's kind of it, that's the nice thing about you know surrogate mothers, surrogate children, that kind of thing. You can almost relate this to, um, yeah, and I'll put my own self in this kind of like having stepchildren. Uh, or being a stepfather, it, it, it's kind of neat. You get to play both sides whenever it's convenient, to be honest. So like, you know, in some moments you can be the parent um, when you, when you need to be right to support the other person, that kind of thing. And then on the other side, when, you know, mom's getting after the 13 year old, I can kind of step in and say, Hey, 
I'm not going to be the parent here. I'm going to be your friend or I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to be somebody that you can look up to, not as a parent, but just as a, as an adult or somebody who maybe has gone through what you've gone through as a, as a boy, as a young man, that kind of thing. And so, and I'm, I'm probably putting way too much into that or, or, or getting real deep there, but, but this whole, this whole, uh, uh, relationship between surrogate son and being a leader, I think Leia gets to kind of play both of them whenever she needs to. It's why we see her, you know, slap Poe one moment and, you know, getting guiding everybody the next. Yeah. yeah, and guiding them the next and then telling everybody, Hey, you need to follow this guy. He's a leader. Even though she slapped him just, you know, a few hours ago or however long it was, um, as the quote mother, because I mean, you wouldn't do that in, you know, some military command, all right. You wouldn't go slap people. I mean, I guess you could, but, um, but it's not what we think of today. So, um, all that to say, I, I, I originally got that, that whole idea that it was more of a surrogate relationship simply from the EW, um, stuff that entertainment weekly stuff that came out where they had, uh, they had asked, um, Isaac about it. And he basically said, yeah, Poe is, the surrogate son for Leia, uh, he said, but I also think she sees the potential in him for, to truly be a great leader uh, for the resistance and beyond. So is it's it, a cool is, dynamic, though, to be able to do, kind of play both. True. I mean, is it more of like like Leia latched onto him and kind of, well, she sees a lot of Han in him, I, I imagine, obviously. Right. You the know, pilot. Yes. And probably even some a little bit of Ben and what he was like. And maybe she kind of clung to him and just kind of to heal herself in a way. Cause you know, that's a big thing when your son turns to the dark side and, and all that stuff and everything else. And, you know, and then maybe this young guy comes along. that's the same age as roughly the same age as your son. And he reminds you a lot of him and maybe your husband and stuff. And you kind of just go with it and stuff. And you see the potential in leadership, which she saw in Han too. Like she saw all those qualities in Han and brought that out in him with Han. So, no, and, you know, this, that's not yeah, it. Yeah. No, what is no, it? I was quoting the line from Empire. She's, you're oh, a great oh, leader. No, I'm, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I know. I thought you were interrupting me the way you said, <laughs> no, but yeah, sorry sorry about I, that. I, I, got, saying, yeah. I got into character and got really excited. So I apologize. That's all right, kid. That's all right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you, you want to go do that solo movie? But, um, in any case, you know, I, I can see that whole latching on thing. And, and, you know, um, I, I just, it's too bad. Like Poe, and Ben didn't have a rivalry because of it, but you know, well, maybe they did. Maybe yeah, they didn't. I mean, we can I, you know, still get that. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. Now, I mean, but in any case, but I, I just want to take a, a moment uh, before we get into the tough choices thing is to say, you know, it's funny because Carrie's performance in in the Last Jedi was pretty good. I thought it was a, her best performance out of you know the last two movies that she did here. The Force Awakens. It felt like she was. Rusty. Now that's no credit, no discredit to her because she did a better job than I could do, uh, and a lot of other people. So I just think she was, I, I, I guess underdeveloped. Like her character wasn't, yeah, doing as much as she did in this one, and she really shined in in the Last Jedi, and I thought it was great, um, and and all that stuff. So I just yeah, want to acknowledge. Say, yeah, go ahead. No, no, it's all right. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say the same thing. Really, it's it's really a it's a it's a credit to, to Ryan. I mean, we, I mean, on one hand, I know we've said some, some critical things of him, but on the other hand, there are things that he did really well. And this is one of the ones where I felt like, okay, he really put her front and forward in the spotlight. And and this didn't have to be her movie, right? Cause we knew going into this originally, they had said, you know, seven was Han, eight was Luke and nine was going to be Leia. And yes. I'm not saying she had a breakout performance and she was, you know, had, you know, an hour and a half of screen time or anything. No, no, no. I, I think but that the, 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 the the problem being is, is it's not that it's a, well, it, it's, it stinks because I think in nine, she would have done even better. I think that's where I'm, you know, I'll leave it at that. But yeah. Yeah. Continue. And no, and I was just, I was just saying that to, to Ryan's credit, he got her more time. She didn't feel just like a background character, which she kind of did for me in the force. In Awakens. The force Awakens. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and here she, she, she had a purpose. It really, you know, apart from being able to see all the force stuff and, um, we we knew that uh, she was going to be that that mentor for Poe, and that was kind of her role in here. But it it didn't it, it turned into a lot to be a lot more right. She could have easily just been another background. It could have been another background performance for her. But I think because of the way Ryan wrote her into it, I think it it, it did her justice. So that was really nice to see that. Um, yeah, and I don't know that she. You know, I thought she did a pretty good job too. Um, uh, you know, acting wise, uh, given what she had, and I know she had a hand in some of the words and some of the dialogue, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because uh, I don't think I think the the Force Awakens her dialogue was weak. I yeah. mean, she did well for what it yeah. was, I, and she had some funny moments and stuff like that. But I don't think it was 
strong as it was in in the, the last Jedi. Obviously, right. agreed. Yeah, so we'll leave it at that. All right. Well, I just we'll get into another relationship, and then I'll get into uh, one more point that I want to make with the tough de- uh, decisions and stuff. Is Haldo, which was an interesting dynamic because Haldo and Poe both have an. It, it's funny because I think we even said on that episode that they yeah. both are really one and the same person, and they mm-hmm. really admire Leia a lot. And I just like that's an interesting dynamic. Um, I don't know, but what are your thoughts on Leia and Haldo? Yeah, I mean, they're almost like uh, they're cut from the same cloth, I guess. I hate to use that because it's kind of cheesy and, and proverbial, but they <laughs> but they really are. I mean, they and we I, this is what we talked about on the Haldo episode. Um, so I won't rehash too much, but we know that they grew up together and and they, you know, from from a very, very early age. Um, so they were there at the infancy of the rebellion. They got to see it all, be a part of it all. Um, which was kind of cool. I mean, they both, the way they handle each other or each other is, is very different. Um, they're not the same kind of character whatsoever. Uh, but in terms of where their spirit is, um, you know, the assertiveness, the leadership, uh, even just their thinking, um, and how they go about it, that seem, they seem to be on the same page there. So, and they've always seemed to be on the same page. And I think going into this movie, you know, prior to it releasing, we were spending a lot of time speculating as to whether or not she was going to betray Leia. And, um, I wasn't in that camp. Uh, I just, I well, couldn't I see say, what, it, what would have caused that. I mean, there was a lot of time that passed between the book, obviously in, in the last correct. Jedi, but, um, given what I knew at the characters, it just felt weird that they would go that, w- go that route. Well, Haldo is, is a different character from the book to where we see her in the last Jedi. And I thought like Haldo would like not necessarily betray Leia, but like do something that would contradict Leia and put her in jeopardy, so to mm. speak, because Haldo kind of does her own thing. You know, I mean, she's at least she did in the book. She was kind of out there doing her own crazy things and, you know, driving Leia crazy. But Leia saw her use in her and saw her an ally and, and, uh, a, and became a friend. So and it's just interesting that Haldo returned that affection later on. Like they obviously grew very close to each other and formed a bond and everything else. Now, the interesting thing. The only thing that was crazy to us, and we said it on last episode, I don't want to spend too much time, is the fact that Poe never met Haldo, and they both admire and respect Leia so much, you would think they would kind of bump into each other, but I don't want to get into that too, too much. Um, What I'm going to go to into now is is the fact that Leia made these tough choices, you know, where where she demotes Poe, her best pilot, her best fighter, slaps him, snaps him out of it, and says, no, you're demoted. And have a seat on the bench and everything. And then when Haldo takes over, she, you know, they're going away. And, and you know, Haldo's like, no, I'm going to go and pretty much kill myself and save everyone else and, and all this other stuff. And Leia kind of like, all right, you know, accepts it and kind of yeah, goes don't on with it. E- don't, don't forget to ease off on the clutch. Yeah, exactly. And uh, shut the lights off when you're done. You know, right. that type of thing. So it's interesting that Leia even accepts that and says, yeah, you're right. Like, like she's willing to sacrifice her good friend who's even, well, about the same age, but you know, it's like, I don't know. It's just weird that she kind of just said, all right. And just kind of went on the thing and and accepted that and, and knew what the sacrifice was being made and it had to be made. You almost would think it's almost like the, the whole Akbar thing where you would think Akbar would say, no, no, let me do it. Or, or Leia would even say, you know what? I've been through enough. Let me do it. Um, yeah. But I, I think it goes back to kind of what I said initially, where we had Mary Poppins Leia, and and I know some people are mad at me for saying that, but that's just the moment I'm going to, and you know where Leia is coming through space. So in any case, where she needed to live because the resistance needed her, and I think Haldo obviously agreed that Leia's leadership was still needed, and even and Leia kind of knew, all right, I, I have to stick around, so to speak, and then with Poe obviously and stuff like that. But what what do you think of that whole? Her making those choices that, you know, I'm not sure normal, regular people could make. Like, I'm not sure I could do some of those choices, really. Like, even even my best pilot or whatever, you know, I know, you know, I'm not sure I could demote them like that. I don't know. That's yeah. just me. But what what do you think? Well, I think, didn't she demote him? And then, like, the very next scene, he's like, can I go blow stuff up? She's like, she yeah, go blow yeah. stuff up, right? <laughs> yeah. So she let him just kind of get it all out there. So, um, but as far as Holdo goes, um. You know, I, the only thing I would, the only thing I'd add really is, yeah, it does feel like it's, it's kind of just nonchalant that she's going to allow it to happen. The only thing I would think is if you, if you, if you subscribe to the fact that they have been together for so long, they're the best, they're best buds. 
They finish each other's sentences, right? All that stuff. They're that close. They're that in sync. Then maybe they both just know that that's just the harsh reality of it all. And they've played it out in a million different scenarios and both have come to that realization. And there's really no point in getting, you know, too emotional or, uh, you know, they've had a long, they've had a good ride kind of thing. And it's just what that's has true. to be done. Right. You know, maybe that's just, that's just where they are maybe in, in their relationship or in their, in their leadership in those positions. That would be the only thing I could think that, that would be able to explain why they're just very kind of casual about it. Like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'm going to go check out. So yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, you know, see you on the other side kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I'll see you on the other side. We'll see. <laughs> right. Um, you never know. I don't know. You say Godspeed rebels and Leia says, may the force be with you. I don't know. There's a lot of religions going on around here. <laughs> so who knows what's what um, and stuff like that. But uh, well, I guess the other big connection we should get into is obviously her brother, Luke. I mean, there's obviously a special bond there that goes beyond without saying and, 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 and whatnot. And it's interesting that once again, Leia's effect on Luke is what kind of brings him back into the fold. Of course, R2 helped with the dirty play that he did with the, the uh, yeah. which I called, by the way, with the Low hologram. Ball. You did yeah, call that before the yeah, movie came out. Exactly. And I thought that was a great move. It was interesting. I thought it was going to be a new message from Leia saying, hey, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I was I was pretty close. Um, and it's interesting that Luke taps into the force again because of Leia. Like, that was his one reason for saying, all right, I got to see what's going on here. Leia showed, you know, brings this sends this kid here and Chewie's here and Han's dead and, you know, and, and then he finds out that Leia's injured and all this other stuff. And it's just interesting that he kind of awakens. And I think even if I remember right, that Leia kind of wakens after that as well. Like they yeah, both yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah, they kind of snap out of it um, for that balance. Like they need each other there. And, and it's a very special moment. And of course, you know, you have the force projection thing and, and then that's where my bigger, one of my issues is now I don't have a problem with the force projection thing. I think that, you know, I think my problem is that Luke wasn't really physically there for his sister. I think that's kind of my hang up a little bit. And maybe that's something I'll get over and I'll have to work through it. like a, with everything else in, in life and with the last Jedi and stuff, you know, um, I would rather have had them actually phys like him physically be there with Leia. And I think it would have meant more to me. I don't know. I could be wrong. I mean, I could look back, uh, you know, I could watch it again. And then be like, oh, no, no, that's that's fine. I really didn't have a problem with it. I remember watching it. I just, I think as a fan, I guess this is my one fan side where I'm saying, no, nah, I'd rather have had him physically there just for that moment. Not so much against Kylo, really. He could have been a force projection for that. That wouldn't have really bothered me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, because they have such a special bond and such a special connection. And maybe this is that whole, we never had the big three reunite again, which I kind of like and I kind of don't like because in a way, in real life, things don't work out the way you plan. And you're not going to get that kind of happy ending. I, I don't have a problem with that. But as a fan, you're kind of like, ah, I would have loved to see them get back together again. And even Mark Hamill said as such. But uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on their, their final moments, I guess you could say? Well, if it really is, who knows? Yeah. Maybe Luke. Well, I'll take yeah. it back before before yep. I talk about the final moment. The uh, Just going back to that scene where, you know, he's you know meditating and then says Leia and, you know, she kind of wakes up kind of thing. Um, that That's another one that I... I think I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll get more in the novel because um, maybe there is, you know, it, I would like to think it's more than just them kind of pinging each other. I'd like to yeah, I, think that there I, was a conversation being had there that, that that played out that we didn't get to see on camera. I, well, what I would imagine even with Luke himself, because that's when he awakens and he was going to find Ray after that. And then, you know, the hut scene and the hand sex scene and all that other stuff happens. Um, so we didn't get that. Yeah. in between there because we had to go to Ray's vision and, and, you know, that whole facing the mirror thing and everything right, right, and stuff like that. So yeah, I think the book will explain a little bit more now. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully the answers are good. They could be answers we don't want to know, but you know, who knows, yeah. uh, but continue. Um, but yeah. And then as far as the, that last scene is, is one of my favorites really. And I, and I actually hadn't thought about what you had said before about, um, about him physically not being there, right. That whole, uh, the physical presence and what that, what that means to us in, you know, in real life. And, um, you know, everybody's different, but I can, I can definitely see where you'd be coming where you're coming from there. Um, but even still, I thought that last scene was, was pretty special. Um, it, you know, that whole, you know, I changed my hair kind of thing. I, that's like one of my favorite lines there. Cause it's just so, um, tongue in cheek, right? They're, they, 
their brother and sister, they've, uh, you know, it's just a very special bond. And in that moment, you know, they're going to crack a joke like that. And that to me was, is kind of like the star Wars humor. I think that, uh, I appreciate more than maybe some of the other stuff in it, but, um, but yeah, I mean that, you know, we didn't talk about, I don't think we talked about the dice either. And, you mm. know, there's, um, when he hands her the dice and, and, and you look at her face and there's almost a, you almost get a glimpse that maybe she realizes in that moment that holy smokes, he's not really here. Um, she doesn't blow his cover. She doesn't say anything, obviously, but um, it, you kind of get the sense that maybe in that moment she realizes that, oh, well, he's really not here. Um, but she maybe she understands why. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That whole scene is, is really cool because you don't really see anybody else around either. It's it's just yeah, them. Yeah, you mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah when, when you, you know, look and, at it. When you look at it, you don't really see anyone else, which is, is kind of nice. So, and I don't know if that was uh, Johnson's doing or if that just, you know, the camera angles or shots were just, they turned out that way. But um, you kind of forget that any, anything and everything is happening. You just have your, your whole focus on is on Luke and Leia, you know, being reunited again. And since what Jedi was it the last time we saw them together. Mm-hmm. So uh, at least on camera anyways, but yeah. Well, my, like my other question is real quick is, he hands her the dice and says, you know, no one's ever truly gone. Is that him kind of maybe nudging her in a, in a way of like, okay, you know, he kind of setting the tone for healing from Han's death and maybe even the, the loss of Ben in a sense, because he gives her the dice and stuff. And from what it seems, it seemed, I, I'm curious, I got to look at it again. I got to watch, I got to pause it or whatever I got to do when I get the video is, does she physically let it go at some point? Or and we don't, I just didn't see it. Or did she just drop it because they're running away and blah 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 blah? And she just left it there because she's finally letting go of that pain and that hurt in the in the past and kind of moving forward now where she needs to be. I don't know. That's I'm gonna have to when we get the the you know comes out on video. I'm gonna have to dissect that and see how that goes because I've been wondering mm-hmm. that for a while. Is she just kind of letting go, or did she do it purposely, knowing Kylo was Kylo gonna? Yeah, that he would find it and, and go from there because she knew things were dire and and whatever. I don't know. What what are your thoughts on the whole, you know, getting the dice, letting it go and, you know, maybe Luke kind of putting her at ease, so to speak? Yeah. No, and I, I think so the way I interpret that was really kind of like what you said, um, that no one's ever truly gone, meaning that that was more about Kylo um, than Han. Um, but I can see the I can see where you could say that it, he's speaking well, I only, to really both. I only say that because they both kind of come to that gr- agreement, you know, when she says, I know I've had hope for so long, but, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, he says to him, would you come to save my soul? And he's like, no. Right. <laughs> you know, very sarcastically. I get the sense it was more of a Han thing than it actually was a Kylo thing. But you can take it both ways in a sense of like, well, Kylo maybe he may be Kylo, but Ben's still there somewhere. And someday... He'll return to being Ben, maybe. I, I'm not sure how that goes and, and whatever. But uh, any more thoughts on, on Luke and, and Leia? Mm, no, but I am curious. Yeah, like you said, I, I do want to kind of break that scene down and see. I don't remember them. I don't remember her dropping the dice. In fact, I think they just they cut away. It, and then every yeah, shot yeah. they show thereafter is pretty much at the face or neck above. So we don't really know what happens. Maybe we get it again in the novel. Um, but I would like to think that she left the dice there intentionally for uh, Kylo. Well, that would be very... Like, that would be very Leia, yeah, I think. Right. Like, like I think she would kind of be like, you know, because she's tapped into the force in a way. So you think she'd be like, all right, well, I'll leave this kind of here. And, yeah, he's you know, going to be here in 10 minutes. I'm going to put him or, right here. Or it could have been like another paradise that Luke put there, like with the force projection thing. And Leia actually has the physical dice. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's two dice that we just didn't see the other one. I don't know. Maybe the book will explain that uh, yeah. and so forth. But all right, well, let's let's get into the... I think the bigger reveal for me at the end with Leia's character is the fact that, you know, it's funny that she's sitting there and they're all looking at her and says, well, listen to him, not me. Uh, paraphrasing there, of course. And she's willing to take kind of a lesser role and be more of a guide, I guess, which is what they were setting up for nine, I think. Um, but, you know, sadly, that's not going to happen. Or, well, maybe it could. I don't know what they're going to do with with nine. Uh, they say that she's not going to be in it. So, it's it's almost like she's going into retirement, but which she would earn, trust me. I mean, after everything that's happened, but you know, as as Ray says to her, you know, that I think there was gonna be a special moment with Ray 
and her going into nine is her kind of guiding Ray a little bit more, but yeah. unfortunately, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's been ever officially announced, but I think they've they've hinted that she would be some kind of a mentor and, and maybe she goes through, you know, learning the force just like her, or they're both learning together and interpreting the the mm-hmm. Jedi text in a new way together. Force ghost Luke shows up. Hey, what's up, girls? Um <laughs> yeah. look at me, I'm a force ghost. Boo. Right. You know, that type of stuff. But no, I, I just think it was uh interesting that she kinda after leading them all to that point and kind of getting to that point. I think she even realized like, all right, Poe is taking on that bigger leadership. Ray is obviously the, the Jedi that's going to go forward and, and do what needs to be done there. And she's realized her time has come and gone in a way, which is a kind of a beautiful thing. Like she's realized, all right, it's time for me to step away and, and kind of like Kanan, like say, yeah, I, right. I'm not going to lead anymore. I've done my time. It's up to you guys now. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, and that's part yeah. of that's part of passing the proverbial torch. There's two Correct. things that have to happen. The, per, the 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 apprentice has to want to take that on that mantle. They've got to reach a point of maturation or you know sense Accept, acceptance, right? Yeah. And yeah. say, okay, I'm going to do this. And in that moment, when when we get Poe, you know, giving that whole speech of we'll be the you know he'll be the fire that ignites the whatever blah 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 that whole thing. That was his <laughs> moments of of accepting. To me, at least, that's what that was when he accepted it. I think Leia saw that. The other thing that needs to happen is that leader now has to acknowledge that, okay, he's ready. I know he's ready or she's ready. Then they have to take a step back. They have to get they have to get out of being, you know, upstage the in way. front. Yeah. They gotta get out of the way and let this person lead. And that's exactly I mean, they literally did that in the movie where she's like, you know, she's in the back, he's already taken off, and she's got these stragglers behind him looking at her going you know, what do we do? And she's like, what are you looking at me? Follow, you know, follow him. You know, Correct. he's now the leader. So that, those are the two things that have to happen in order for that torch to be passed. And in that, you know, short segment, it, that, that's kind of what happened. So um, I think it's definitely a nod to where I think we'll see, you know, we'll definitely see Poe go down that route. Maybe he comes back as, you know, a commander, you know, maybe he's a general, maybe he's an admiral, who knows. But I would think depending on how much time we get from the, from the jump, uh, I think we're going to get a sense that, He's been on that straight and narrow path as a leader, no longer the hero. Or maybe he can do both, right? He knows when it's when it's um, you know uh, appropriate well, didn't to be he a learn, leader versus a hero. Well, did he kind of learn that lesson? Because my question to you now is, did Leia make the right choice? And well, she might not have had much of a choice in letting Poe take that role. Now, you know what I mean? Like you know, and and she must have even seen Finn and even Rose do their actions and everything, and realize, all right, it's time for them. To defeat this enemy, I yeah. can't. Well, My she had a one in twenty chance of getting it right, so I think. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, see, and then it goes back to what I had said. I'd love to have seen Haldo live on and kind of take that mantle, but yeah. obviously that was that's a different play. And again, it, in a way, it's a good thing because life doesn't go as the way you planned, and that's just the way it is. As my father would always say, "That's that's what happens, and you got to adjust to it and, and adapt to it and stuff like that." And obviously, they did. Now they're down to like fifteen people in a in a Wookie. So they got to figure things out pretty quickly. And Leia, I, I don't know where we go from here with Leia's character. It'll be interesting. I kind of like the idea of her going off into the sunset and maybe fading away and maybe not being heard from again. But I don't think she would do that, so to speak. Um, yeah. Um, you know, it's almost like they would say, oh, she passed away off screen or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll yeah. get. I mean, I, 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 well, I well, here's one thing I I don't want to see, and I hope I, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't want it in the opening crawl. That to me just seems kind of like a disservice. No, right? I, I th- I'd rather have like Poe mention it to Ray or yeah, something or, like, or Poe, like, right? Yeah, Poe yeah. Poe would be the obvious choice to give us the exposition as to what happened to her. You know, years ago, this battle, whatever happened to Leia, that kind of thing. We he starts talking about it. Um, I think it would be cool to have Ray do it as well, depending on where how the story plays out. I could see her being in a, in a position to be able to speak about, you know, our heroes that we've lost, like Luke Skywalker, like General Organa, right? Right. There's maybe something there that she could be doing in, in some well, kind of Well, yeah, because you got to imagine, all right, now if we get a time gap and Ray and her was sitting in the Falcon together and, and kind of talking, you imagine there was at least a few years of mentorship. Mentorship, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I personally, if, if, if it was me, not that, what I come up with is anything rock solid or anything um, other than the R2 thing um, is, <laughs> is the fact that Poe is maybe this reluctant leader, almost like a mirror of Kylo. As I said before, he's really not made to be a leader. 
Poe, maybe more, but I think I'm not sure his hot headedness can cool off enough. It's like putting Han Solo as a leader, as as like a, a leader of, of the resistance. I don't know if he can handle being the top guy. And maybe he's reluctant and doesn't know what to do. And Ray comes over and they start talking. And then he's saying, he mentions how I wish she was still here. You know, that type of thing. Almost like Count Dooku when he mentions Qui-Gon. I wish she was still here. Yeah. Something like that in a, in a, in a sense. So, so maybe we, we see Poe struggling with not having her around and, and, you know, that whole stuff. And, and maybe even Kylo blames Poe with her death or something like that. You know, there's a, there could be a whole big thing or something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned yeah. earlier the rivalry. I mean, that's, there's there's enough there, I think. There's enough seeds that they planted that they could play on to kind of build out that rivalry where, you know, Kylo blames Poe for you know, uh, his mom's death or for what, you know, if, if he's that sentimental well, about it. Or vice versa. Or vice you know, versa, right. You know what and, I mean? Like, they blame each other and then there's a whole, you know, we get the space battle finally where they're flying and shooting at each other. Uh, that would be interesting. I, yeah, I, I mean, it would have to be a space battle too, because I mean, on equal ground, he, he you oh, know, yeah. Poe's not going to win. No, but that would be—I would still think that would be an epic fight in 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 the space. But uh, in yeah. any case, um, but anyway, back to Leia. What are your final thoughts on Leia and 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 all that stuff? I mean, obviously, yeah, she's a been, tremendous character and and stuff. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, it's it's been bittersweet. I mean, you know, um, I think I feel like. I would say 99% of um, Star Wars fandom in that we didn't get, um, you almost feel robbed, I guess. I don't know if that's um, too strong no, of a word or the right word. I think but, that's pretty accurate. Like, I feel, um, you feel like there's something missing there now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you know. And, you know, we heard it, we heard it in all the interviews, especially when you're talking about Isaac and, and Hamill and um, uh, Ridley, when they were kind of talking about how this was, you know, uh, losing her when we did. Um, certainly Ryan Johnson has been pretty, pretty, uh, um, uh, pretty, he's, he's had some pretty deep talks about what it was like in, in, in dealing with that loss. And I think it was, uh, too soon, obviously too pre- premature. I wish it hadn't happened. And, um, you know, now they've got to make the best out of the storyline because again, it was, it was supposed to be her story. And I know Disney has already gone on record saying that they've had to rewrite or rethink what they were going to do going into nine um they've said that they're not going to recast her i know her daughter was like yeah it's fine disney kathleen came out and said we're not doing it don't worry about it we're not going to do cgi we're not going to do a stand-in so yeah i don't want them, anyone to do anything i just yeah. like don't like, let's not go there let's just it was great for rogue one um although I, I i have problems with the whole that whole ending in a way not the ending when they all die that i don't have a problem with you know hey let them all die. But, you know, the whole Vader with the guitar solo stance and the the, the ship taking off and Leia saying what she did, it kind of doesn't mesh well. But but that's neither here nor there. But I don't want CGI Leia and I don't want another actress playing it and then putting a CGI head on. And I, I just think for the respect of Carrie and even Princess Leia or General Leia, whatever you want to go with, but she'll always be a princess to me, um, is, is just letting her go off peacefully and kind of you know that's the way it is because no one else can nail leia like leia and, and carrie and it's it, you just can't so there's no way to do it and just let it be i guess you could say but yeah, uh, i think i think yeah. the uh so if i could just the the last thing i'd say is yep. you know earlier we talked about you know leia's character kind of being defined by loss and you as much as we love her it it, it the bittersweet part of this is that you know she's never going to have, we're never going to get the happy ending for her. Um, we won't see it. And it, it ends on a sour note because she lost, you know, her brother and, uh, she lost her best friend husband. And, you know, and her husband. Right. Uh, so she's had a really rough time, you know, timeline wise, when you took look at the, the force awakens and the last Jedi. And I think I really would have wanted to have seen in nine, just a moment where she's, you know, maybe like at the end of Jedi where she's finally at peace kind of thing and you get to see her big smile and we don't see just that somberness and the eyes that you know that that carrie does so well so that's the part that's bittersweet is that we i don't know that we'll, we were well we're not we're not going to be able to really get that moment with her and her character so it's unfortunate yeah. but that's just where it is i guess i agree i agree it's like a missed uh moment that we won't get in unfortunately but uh i think they'll handle it right i've said this since it happened when Carrie passed. They said they'll, they will handle it right. And I think they'll do it respectfully. And I think they'll do the right thing at the end of the day. Uh, so I'm not really worried. Uh, I just think as 
from the story standpoint and, and even Carrie, the loss of Carrie is, is sad. And, you know, as a fan, you know, the story could have gotten even better going into nine with what her Leia and everything else was going to be. But the thing I'll always love about Leia's character is her strength through it all. She was the strongest character. I don't think there's ever going to be a stronger Star Wars character ever. I'm sorry. This is not, you know, as Luke even said, you were always you know, strong and, and that's true. And I think that I don't think you'll ever find a more stronger Star Wars character than, than Leia. Um, and I dare anyone to kind of challenge me on that. Um, you'll find some stubbornness ones like, like Han, but in any case, uh, I guess that's going to do it for this week. Um, like, unless you got one more thing to say, Albert, I'll give you one more chance. <laughs> no, no, no we'll right. end it right there. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so again, we're going to be taking a two week break. So we'll be back in March. Um, and we'll be discussing all things rebels and stuff like that. So we get some stuff to figure out and we get some announcements coming down the pipeline and some things in the work. So stay tuned. Uh, more and some on new that. voices that we'll hear soon. Oh yes, exactly. Yes. Jonesy will be join joining us soon. Uh, so look forward to that. And if you want to find all our links and social media, uh, Patreon, if you want to be a Patreon member, we'd appreciate that. Or if you want to buy a t-shirt and support us that way, all our links are in our show description and you can check that out. Click and do whatever you want to do. And with that, we'll see you in two weeks. You're still listening? Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally we do a big, long, drawn-out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff, but I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, we talk about Star Wars, which is their property and all that other good, fun stuff, uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what, so that's your disclaimer. 